In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly King, Paraclete, Spirit of Truth, You who are everywhere present and fill all things, Treasury of all that is good, Master of life, come, dwell within us, cleanse us from all stain, and save our souls, O good one. Mary, cause of our joy, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Today, we're going to look at the readings for Good Friday. The first and second reading, and the psalm, and then uh, next week, we'll look at the uh, actual passion narrative in John. And that'll be our preparation for Good Friday. I'm doing this so that it's all there if anybody wants to take advantage of it, but if you're rushed, you can take whatever part of it you want. So we're going to look now at the first reading, which, as I'm sure you know by now, after the years you've already celebrated this, it's the fourth servant song. We're not going to go into the literary question Doom was the one who picked these out and said there are four songs. There's actually five. If you take the song in uh, Isaiah 61, which is a preaching of the Lord has anointed me and so forth. Um, however, they are an integral part of where they belong. And uh, we're going to be looking now at this first song, this first or this fourth song, rather. Uh, and uh, the whole message of vicarious suffering. So it begins, Hine, Yashkilavdi, Behold, my servant will prosper. He will be lifted up, exalted, high, raised exceedingly. So it starts off with this announcing that the servant is going to be honored greatly and lifted high. Then it starts to describe him. See, uh, and it says, you see, uh, just as many were appalled at him, so marred was his appearance and his form unlike that of man. He's become almost inhuman in his suffering. Now, the model, this man has quite an intuition from the Holy Spirit, quite a prophetic understanding of the restoration of Israel and through Israel the whole world. Uh, it has to come about through suffering. The people have suffered a lot, uh, great sufferings, uh, especially during this time of exile, which they received as a punishment for their sins. Among them, is this exile who's writing this song. And among them may be also someone who is suffering a good deal. But it seems as though the model that our author has is Jeremiah. I've read this text for you before, but I think I'll read it again. Um, it's a text. Uh, it's from, uh, excuse me, is from chapter 20 in the book of Jeremiah. The, we have these, what are called in Jeremiah, the confessions of Jeremiah. These places where he complains to God. Um, this is one. You led me on, O Adonai, and I let myself be led. You forced me, and you won. And I, a laughing stock all day, sport for every passerby. Whenever I speak, I shout violence, which is a, uh, a, a legal word. I'm calling out for help to redress violence. Plunder is my cry. For Adonai's word to me, scorn and derision all the day long. I go and pronounce his word as he tells me, and all I get is suffering, abuse, ridicule, and persecution. 
So I said, I will not remember it. No more will I speak in his name. Then in my heart it turned to fire, burning, imprisoned in my bones. I am weary holding it in. I can no longer. I would like to quit this job, but I can't. Something deeper in Jeremiah is binding him to God. And so, despite himself almost, he's yielding to the will of God. And uh, that suffering that he's going through is uh, the model that our author has. This author is a mystic as well. He's in the exile. And he's trying to uh, understand through prayer how the people will ever be restored to their land. And there are plenty of passages in this part of Isaiah announcing this return. Uh, the whole book begins, the book of consolation. You know, uh, a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. But that way of the Lord to bring the people back where they belong uh, requires this suffering of this man. This is vicarious suffering. Uh, this too is uh, been um, adumbrated. Remember when Moses, and we'll get back to that later, vicarious suffering. Uh, Moses said finally, um, you see, uh, Um, I'm just going to read one line. I'll read the rest later. But now, if you will only forgive this sin, but if not, blot me out of the book that you have written. That's Moses. If you're, if you're not going to forgive them, then blot me out of the book of the living. But Adonai said to Moses, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. But now, go lead my people. I will not blot them all out. That's Moses' intercession. Uh, that and Jeremiah, and now we have the full fruit of them in uh, this servant. Okay? So behold, my servant will prosper. He will be lifted up, exalted high, raised exceedingly. It starts off announcing his success. But then it starts to talk of uh, how he arrived at this success. Just as many were appalled at him, so marred was his appearance and his form unlike that of man. So shall he startle many nations, because of him many kings shall shut their mouths. For what was never recounted to them they will see, and what they never heard they will ponder. This marvel, this suffering that restores God's people. For who would believe what we have heard in the arm of the Lord unto whom it has been renewed? And thou revealed, and now it starts to talk. And he grew up before him like a tender shoot from dry earth. There was no attractive form to him that we should look at him, and no appearance that we should be drawn to him. He was despised and shunned by men, a man of suffering and knowing sickness. They hid their faces from him and took no account of him. That's the situation. Now, the mystic. Surely it was our sicknesses that he bore, our wounds he carried, and we looked on him as stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. And he was wounded because of our rebellion, afflicted because of our sins. The chastisement that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds there is healing for us. This is the mystery. How come he suffering and we're being reinstated and forgiven. This mystery of vicarious suffering. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray, each to the way before him, and Adonai placed on him the sin of us all. Oppressed and afflicted, he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to slaughter, and like a sheep before its shearers, he was silent. He did not open his mouth. There's an allusion to those lines when Jesus doesn't speak at the trial. By oppression and judgment, false judgment, he was taken away. And who gave it a thought? He was cut off from the land of the living. For the rebellion of my people, the blow is his. And they put his tomb among the wicked and with the rich in his death. 
though he had done no violence and there was no guile in his mouth. And Adonai was pleased to crush him in infirmity when his life serves as a compensation for guilt. He will see offspring and have a long life and the will of Adonai will prosper at his hands. Huh? For the agony of his soul he will see light and he shall be satisfied. By his knowledge the just one will make just the many and their sins he will bear. Therefore I will give him a portion with the many and with the mighty he shall divide the spoils because he exposed himself to death and was numbered among the sinners. He was numbered among the wicked and he bore the sins of many and interceded for sinners. That is this great understanding of what I want to talk about now a bit. That is the question of vicarious suffering. Who besides, as I already said, Jeremiah, but also Moses. Um, Moses um, also is willing to step into the breach uh, and uh, be the one who takes the punishment. And so, um, next day, the Moses said to the people, you have sinned a great sin. That's a technical term. Hata means adultery. You have, you have been false to God, your spouse, who espoused you, wedded you to himself, of all the people on the earth. You are his people. And you have sinned a great sin. But now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. Uh, so Moses returned to Adonai and said, Alas, this people has sinned a great sin, adultery. They have made for themselves gods of gold. But now if you will only forgive their sin. But if not, blot me out of the book that you have written. Take me, not them. Let me suffer this. Look at the love. Look at the love of the people. Look at the love of God. Moses, the great intercessor. And there's other, I'm going to show you other places where these same things are said. You see, uh, he's willing to be blotted out of the book of life for the sake of his people. That's Christ. And that's the model for the man who wrote the suffering servant. That is, it goes, Moses, Jeremiah, suffering servant, all one mystery culminated in Jesus himself. And so, um, but now if you will only forgive their sin, but if not, blot me out of the book that you have written. The Lord said to Moses, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. But now go lead the people to the place about which I have spoken to you. Uh, nevertheless, when the day comes for punishment, I will punish and so the Lord sent a plague because they made the calf. But he didn't blot them all out and he didn't leave being their, their God. And that was uh, uh, what um, Moses was praying for. Uh, and so this mystery of the carrier's suffering, huh? we're going to continue to look at it um, There is a beautiful text I will find in a moment uh, where Rashi has these lines about the prayer. Um, but first, I want to start looking at this notion of uh, one person, uh, mister one mystical person. Uh, as it's in, just briefly, as it's in the uh, the Old Testament. Huh? Here we go. Uh, this is a, this is Rashi putting words into the Lord's mouth as he's commenting on this 
particular section of Exodus where Moses is interceding. You see, these are the words that Rashi puts in his mouth. The time has arrived when you shall see of my glory so much as I will allow you to see according as I wish. This is God speaking to Moses. Therefore, I find it necessary to teach you a set form of prayer. Listen to this mystic Rashi interpreting this text and giving us an understanding. Just now, you felt the need to pray for mercy on Israel's half behalf, you besought me to remember the merits of the patriarchs. And so, uh, you see, Rashi introducing the, uh, the uh, prayer it talks about uh, even if you invoke all the, uh, the uh, merits of the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Moses, you know, Israel, all everybody, they may not be enough to offset the evil of my people. But I, God says, I will teach you a prayer that I can't resist. And so then we have this text, you see. Adonai came down in a cloud and took his stand with him there, and he, and he, probably Moses, maybe Adonai himself, called on the name of Adonai. And Adonai passed before his face, and he called out, and this is the prayer, Adonai, Adonai, compassionate and gracious God, long-suffering and great in hesed and faithfulness, keeping hesed for a thousand generations, lifting off wickedness, rebellion, and sin, and not declaring the guilty guiltless, visiting the sins of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third generation and a fourth. That's Adonai. You see, he's Herakopayim. He's uh, long-suffering compassionate and gracious. And that's the uh, the, the prayer uh, that Moses said, you see, identified with the people. And so, uh, this prayer, see, forms the model for this servant song. It was our sins and he bore them. You see, uh, it was for, by his stripes we are healed. This is such a mystery. It's already in the Old Testament. I mean, in a moment we're going to start looking at how it's intensified, brought to an incredibly profound, unmatchable height, because the one who identifies himself as the sin is God Himself. That's what this text is all about. And so, um, we're going to be looking at that now uh, in the next few minutes. Uh, after we uh, take a break, we'll uh, continue right where we left off.